Kidderinos, welcome to Cornerstone SF Kids Church. I am Polly the Prehistoric Pelican, and today I am visiting windy and shiny downtown Chicago. Let's take a look and soak it all in. Wow, seeing this bread bean sculpture really gets me in the mood to worship. Let's go. Turn to you. You are my help when I need wisdom. You always see me through to know that you're chasing after me. It makes me want to run to where you are. God, you make this journey worth it. I give you all my heart. When I don't know what to do, you help me. Hey, welcome to Storyland. This week, we're taking a look at how very important it is to take a look at yourself. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. All month, we're talking about ways that we can grow in wisdom, just like Jesus did. Hey, it's a really good idea to do a mirror check before you go on camera. Good advice. You should take a look. Wait, me? Mm -hmm. You're talking about me? Yes. Well, what'd you have for lunch today? A BLT. Bacon, lettuce, tomato. Here, look. Wait. 
a tiny microscopic piece of lettuce? How'd you even spot that? Sharp eyes. I mean, it's good you've got me around to keep yourself from embarrassing yourself. Yeah, about that. Oh. Oh. Yikes. Maybe follow your own advice. I should have taken a closer look at myself. Sometimes we all need a closer look. Wanna practice? I think I need to. Let's do it! Welcome to See It! It's the game where you have 15 seconds to see a unique sea creature! Oh! See like the ocean and see like you look at... Oh! Yeah, we got it. You all can do this with us. Get ready. For your first challenge, you're looking for this clownfish in a coral reef. It's time to see it. I don't even know where to look. Do you guys see it? It's so colorful. Oh, wait, is that? No. <sighs> come on, come on. Got it. Wait, where was it? Oh, yeah, I should have seen that. I can do better. Here's your second See It challenge. Find this purple bat star in the kelp forest. Bat star? Kelp forest? And now it's time to See It. Oh, this one's even harder. So pretty. Can you guys see it? Hmm. It's gotta be... I see it, I see it, I see it! Where? Right over there. Way to go. You spotted the bat signal. Can we look for one more? In a little while. But right now, it's time to look at... The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Matthew. Matthew is one of the four books called the Gospels. These books tell the story from the life of Jesus. Matthew was written down by one of Jesus' followers, a tax collector whose life was turned upside down by his friendship with Jesus. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. Everywhere Jesus went, big crowds gathered. Many sick people were desperate to be made well, and Jesus healed them. But Jesus also cared about people's hearts and minds. So, he showed them what it looks like to love God and love others. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Jen. One day early in his ministry, Jesus went up on a mountainside to teach his followers. Soon, a huge crowd gathered. The amazing truth Jesus taught during that time have come to be known as a Sermon on the Mount. Today we're taking a look at one of these truths. Here goes. Do not judge other people. Then you will not be judged. You will be judged in the same way you judge others. You will be measured in the same way you measure others. You know the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear about judging? Order in the court! Jesus wasn't talking about the kind of judge who takes charge in court. Jesus was talking about us. One meaning of judge is to form a negative opinion about someone or something. And we judge people all the time, without even thinking of it. She's stuck up. She's kind of weird. He's so rude. It's easy to judge, but you don't know the whole picture. Maybe their parents were arguing at home. Maybe they're struggling in class or have a stomach ache. In fact, everyone you meet has their own story, just like you do. When you judge someone quickly, you're saying that their story doesn't matter, even though they are just as loved by God as you are. So Jesus told us not to judge others. After all, you don't want them to judge you either. Jesus went on to illustrate this with a pretty funny word picture. You look at the bit of sawdust in your friend's eye, but you pay no attention to the piece of wood in your own eye. How can you say to your friend, let me take the bit of sawdust out of your eye? How can you say this while there is a piece of wood in your own eye? You pretender. First take the piece of wood out of your own eye. Then you will be able to see clearly to take the bit of sawdust out of your friend's eye. I 
think Jesus had a pretty great sense of humor. I mean, when was the last time you walked around with a giant campfire log sitting in your eye? Well, you really messed up. Jesus was using something called exaggeration to help us understand an important idea. It's super easy to point out where someone else is wrong or needs to change. But while we're making a big deal of their spec-sized problem, usually we're ignoring our own log-sized problems. Until you take an honest look at yourself, you're in no shape to help someone else. Maybe you're on a road trip and you are sick of your sister's whining about how long it's taking. You just want to yell. You are such a crabby pants. But when you stop and think about it, you realize that you have spent the whole trip so far griping about dad's music and how mom packed the wrong snacks. Um, everyone, I'm sorry for complaining so much. This doesn't mean that you should never help others grow, but Jesus made it clear that your first priority is to ask God to help you look at yourself and see where you can change. When you're willing to let God help you work on that giant piece of wood in your own eye, instead of searching out the sawdust-sized problems in other people, God can begin to change you from the inside out. Then you'll be ready when others need help. The end. Gotta say, I am way better at seeing what's wrong with other people. It's like default mode. For real, it takes some time and practice to look at yourself first. So, what's our part in the story? Well, learning to look at yourself, both the good and the bad, can help you learn wisdom. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. Like treating others with kindness instead of judging them. Honestly, a lot of times, I just forget. Looking at what I need to change can feel not good. It's important to remember that God made you and loves you, no matter what you struggle with. The love is so deep, God wants to help you become more and more like Jesus. One place to start is by taking a look at what bugs you most about someone else. Often it's something that you struggle with too. Like if I get annoyed with the kid who always argues with the teacher. Start paying attention to whether that's something you do too. It's like we all have these blind spots about ourselves. That's true. Another way to see yourself more clearly is to pay attention to your emotions. When you get angry or feel anxious, what's behind it? Big emotions can actually give you a clue to areas where you might need some help. Sometimes I find myself upset or on the edge and I don't even know why. That's a great time to stop and ask God to show you what's going on inside of you. Get curious. God might even lead you to ask a parent or trusted adult about it too. Get curious about me. I like that. When you allow God to change you from the inside out, then you're in a much better place to make wise choices. And help others who need you. I think you've got it. See you next time. So here's the thing. When you see yourself clearly, you can make the wise choice. And we can all use some seeing practice. Ready for another round of see it? You betcha. For your next challenge, find the thorny seahorse in the seagrass meadow. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, see you, you next time. time. It's time to see it. That was a tricky one. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in this one. Wait, is that? Oh, no, that's not it. Wow. Today's message really hit home. God made me and you to create, learn, and grow in endurance. Truly incredible. With that being said, it's time for the big word. Here it is. If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find fault. James 1, dot, dot, 5. Once again, if any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find fault. James 1, dot, dot, 5. And now, it is time for the one and only Hey, Mr. Phil!
Reginald, Reginald, wake up, wake up, Reginald, Reginald. Oh, hey, boys and girls, it's Mr. Phil here. I was just waking up Reginald because he overslept. Reginald, why did you oversleep? I told you not to stay up so late to watch the Olympics. What, you were dreaming about the Olympics? That you were running in the Olympics? Oh, okay. Well, maybe that's because you watched the Olympics. And maybe it's also because we're talking about how the Apostle Paul says that we're to run the race as if to win. That's right. The race to Christ, the Christian race that we run, right? Living life is like running a race. Sometimes we're running really fast. Sometimes we are kind of slow or we trip and we fall down. Something distracts us. We're not running the right direction. And so, yeah, the Apostle Paul says, hey, run the race as if you're running in a real running race and you want to win that gold medal, okay? So that's what you were dreaming about, huh, Reginald? <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. You can tell me all about it later, all about it later, because right now we have to do our song for the boys and girls, okay? In fact, you can stay right in bed right now and we'll just do our song together, Okay. All right? You okay with that, Reginald? All righty. We'll just do it, just us. Just me, you, and the boys and girls. So let me get my trusty guitar here. And we'll do our song. And the song is called, I Will Run. And it's kind of like running the race, right? Okay, Reginald, do you want to be over here so you can see better? Okay, there, up there, that's good. You can see great from right there. Okay, here we go. I will run How long will it be until We are standing face to face How long will it be until I behold that wondrous place My eyes will be fixed on you and my heart will have found its home Until then I will run this race And will live to make you know I will run I will run All my days are yours I will run I have only you to thank for my soul you transform for all of the times you come like a fire to bring me warmth for all of the times your wounded hands would give me strength me to continue to run this race to make you know. Let's sing. I will run. I will run. All my days are yours. I will run because you are all I am living. That's right. We need to run the race just as if we were in the Olympics and we're trying to win the gold medal. But the important part is just run your best race. Do the best you can do, okay? We don't always have to win, okay? It's not against other people. 
is against our potential, okay? So thank you so much, boys and girls, for um, having a little bit of fun with us and uh, helping me wake up Reginald this morning. Reginald, why don't you say, uh, besides saying good morning, why don't you say goodbye to the boys and girls, okay? And then, um, okay, yeah. All right, see you next week. Bye. Wow, we, what a song. Thanks, Mr. Phil. Reginald sure has some incredible dreams. Awesome. And now, before the sun sets on this amazing bread bean, let's bow our heads to pray. Dear God, thank you that you made us. Help us to have wisdom and to love each other like you love us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, I heard Teacher Sarah is above the bread bean somewhere. I'm going to try and find her. Bye, kids. Thank <laughs> you.